Welcome back everybody, Ben here again. Now today we're gonna to go through some of the biggest lies that the health food industry is trying to feed us. Let's go. Now the first one, serving size. Now this one's got me a few times too. You pick something off the shelf, maybe a packet of crisps, and you look at the back and you go, yeah, oh, the salt's not too bad, I can have that. And then you have it, and then you look at the back a little bit closer, and you realize that the serving size was actually a quarter of the pack. You've had four times what you should have. But who the hell eats nine Pringles or four more teasers? I don't, you don't, we eat the whole thing. So you need to be really careful. You need to look at the back and you need to see how many servings are actually in there. And these companies are getting crafty. And when they make something and they put a calorie figure on the front, if you look in the fine print, it's probably for 1 18th of the pack. So be careful, be conscientious, and check whether you can actually have the whole thing. Next one on the list, the word light. Now when we see the word light on a product, we think, well that should be good. I mean, that should be lighter in calories perhaps lower in fat, lower in salt, lower in sugar. But the reality is the definition of light, as far as the Food Standards Agency is concerned, it's anything but. It's murky and it's really unclear. Some of these companies even put the word light on a product because the color of the product itself is light in nature. I know that sounds mad, but they do. And legally, they get away with it. And some of these companies put the word light on because it's a little bit less than their full fat or full sugar version. It doesn't mean it's any good for you, it just means it's marginally better than the other one they make. The next one, fat free. Now, when you see fat free, that little voice in the back of your mind should come straight in and tell you two things. And the first thing you should say is don't be afraid of dietary fat. It comes in tons of variations, it comes in tons of different types, and you need dietary fat in your body it's healthy for us to have some in our diet. Now the second thing it should be telling you is when you see fat free, they've probably jacked up the sugar to account for the loss in taste. Still sound healthy? Probably not. The next one, no added sugar. I hate this phrase, no added sugar. It's misleading and it probably sells billions of products worldwide just on that phrase alone every single day. But here's the reality, they say no added sugar it means all the natural sugars could still be sky high. So if you woke up in the morning and had a glass of orange juice, let's go say four oranges in, it's approximately 36 grams of sugar. It's the same as a can of Coke. You wouldn't have a can of Coke for breakfast unless you're really hungover. But basically, no added sugar is a complete con. Try and avoid it. The other thing you need to realize is that they can slap no added sugar onto a product if they've taken their first recipe version, released it, sold it for a period of time, and then released this new one. And guess what? They haven't changed the recipe. Therefore, they've not added any sugar on. That sounds ridiculous that they can even get away with that, but companies do. Don't take their word for it. Look at the back. See what natural sugar content is in there. See if it's within what you are supposed to be having for that particular meal or that day. And if it is, great. But don't just take their word for it that no added sugar means it's good for us. The last one, hidden caffeine. Now this is a crazy one, especially for someone like me and those of you that watch the channel know I love a coffee and I have way too much of it. But basically, when you go and pick up an energy drink or one of those really nice iced coffees that comes in the little pot and it's got a little straw and stuff like that, there might be a caffeine level in there that's way above what you actually realize it is. And the way they do that is with the guarana. Now when you look at guarana, guarana has a caffeine ratio that is far, far higher than a coffee bean. But they don't have to break it down and show you what caffeine content the guarana's actually got. So when you look at the back and it says it's 180 milligrams of caffeine, you go, that's not too bad for my little Americano. It could be 240, 250, or even close to 300. Just check the back. Don't just trust their ingredients list at face value. Delve deeper and see what's actually in there in terms of caffeine. Otherwise you'll end up like me and you'll need about nine a day. It's just not good. Okay everybody, I hope you enjoyed that quick little video and we just broke down some of the lies that the health food industry tries to feed us, no pun intended, every single day. 
Now if you did enjoy the video guys, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell notification so that you can stay up to date with every single thing we do. And I'll see you again soon.